Hi guys and welcome to Learn Extra Live. This is Grade 10 Physical Science with me, Indiana, and Tracy. I'm very excited today. Uh, yes. no, look, look how fancy <laughs> she looks in her little lab coat. <laughs> Love it. I'm super <laughs> excited. So guys, last week, if you tuned in, we did bonding. And this week we're going to be doing chemical and physical change. And I know um, Tracy's got a little bit of an experiment lined up, which I'm very excited about. We've got a cameraman on roving. So I think this is going to be a very, very exciting show. Guys, also don't forget, that please send us questions that are only relating to this topic. It helps us get through the questions much, much, much faster um, than usual, than, than yeah. phoning. And hey, last Trace? Week they did great. And last week they yeah. did really good. I heard, I heard so last week was quite a cracker of a show. Hey? Yeah, it was a little bit of information overload, a little less tonight. So yeah, li yeah a little <laughs> bit less tonight, guys. So don't forget, we're doing chemical and physical change tonight. And after the break, we're going to be working through an example or two. Lastly, we'll be tackling your questions in the last 15 minutes of the of the show and he said the page um, <laughs> but our page is www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra so get liking the page for the latest updates the latest news we also post lots of pictures during the show mm -hmm. which is awesome especially in physical science um, so while you're watching shoot through those questions we're going through them in the last 15 minutes of the show I have a Casio calculator to give away Good. to grade 10s 11s and 12s but obviously mm -hmm. this is a grade 10 show so this has got to go to a grade 10 so what we'll do is after the break, we'll be back with Tracy. See you then. Welcome back, great teens. We start, we're going to jump right in now. I said to you before the break, um, Indiana said to you, we're going to do physical and chemical change. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a bit about physical change. I am hoping that you guys have actually done this already because you should have done this as a portfolio prac. But just in case, a little bit of reminder is what we're going to do is we're going to look at melting of ice and we're doing all the right things. I have my lab coat and always remember that when you switch on your Bunsen burner, we're not using a proper Bunsen burner because we don't have this the into the, into the lab, into the studio, sorry, but this is good enough. Um, you always light your match first and then you switch on your gas. Okay. And there we go. And I'm probably going to heats it a little hotter than I would in the classroom, but that's okay. Now, if my friend, Mr. Cameraman, wants to go a little bit closer, you can see right away we have solid ice. We have a little bit of liquid. Don't worry about the smoke. That's just coming off the, the gauze. And what we're going to have is it's very exciting. Okay, also don't worry if you can see some sparks. That's just the white gauze, I think. Whatever experiment was used beforehand just had some leftovers. It looks like iron. And all that's going to happen here is you're going to see the glass steam up like you would at home when you boil the kettle. And my ice is going to melt. It's actually melting very nicely. It's melting very quickly. Okay. So you can see it's becoming different. And if we leave this long enough, and hopefully we'll see some of it, we'll actually see the water start to boil and bubble, which you see at home when you boil the kettle or when you boil water on the stove, but we're going from the ice phase. So what we've got here is I'm going to take the ice and we're taking from solid point. And remember that when ice is in solid, those particles are packed very, very close together. So it's really, really important. Then what we're doing here, and this is what I need you to get with a physical change, is that we're breaking apart the intermolecular force, the bond that keeps the solid particles together, and we're making them less, we're weakening that bond so now the particles can go all over the place and then with the continued heating, okay, that changes from liquid into gas. And I'm hoping this has actually gone really quickly, which I'm very pleased about. And it's going to start boiling in a second. We only used a little bit because unlike at school, I'm hoping you would have used a little bit more than this. You would have taken a little bit longer, but you were also trying to draw the heating curve of water, which was quite an important curve. Okay, make sure you know how to do that. But it's not, th we're just going to... See, and we can see some of the gas particles on the side, the condensation. Remember that? You would have done that in grade 9. We've actually managed to get pretty much all my ice into liquid form. And the beaker's getting quite hot. Don't do this at school. This is bad. Okay, so we leave that. And in a little while, we'll see that it's going to start to boil. We'll see the bubbles. Please, grade 10s, please be careful here in that... It's reached boiling point once it starts to bubble, okay? 
at this point, while it's in the beaky, even though you can't see the bubbling and you can't see the gas coming off, there is evaporation happening. And if I left it at this temperature and it didn't start to boil, eventually all the water will disappear. Because remember, evaporation happens at, ev at any temperature, okay? It doesn't actually change. So we've got this. It might take a little while longer for it to boil, though. We've got actually... my. You can hear the, the gas burning. We love camping stoves. I need one at home, okay, for when we have power outages because I can still drink my coffee. Very important. And this can take a little while. It's, I don't know if the cameraman can see. If, could you focus in at the bottom? I don't know if you can see the bubbles coming out to the bottom. They're starting to come. I know I can see some of them, which makes it much easier. But, yeah, I'll... There we go. So we can start to see the bubbles. Those bubbles are from the fact that our water has now, is now changing into a gas. Okay, So we're going to leave it a little bit longer. We get the boiling. This is a physical change because I put ice in, which is water, and I'm getting water vapor out, which is still water. All we're changing okay, is we're changing the arrangement of the particles. We're changing the way they bonded to each other, but I'm not changing what the substance is. In fact, now it's starting to boil really nicely, and we can hear it, okay. We're not going to leave it on much longer, because there we have the boiling, and we need to go a little, so we've got, there we go. So we've got the boiling, it's turning into a gas. I leave this long enough, and it will all evaporate out, and we can obviously reverse the process. So we're going to stop that. Oh, wrong way. Okay, and in fact, it carries on for a little bit because it's actually very, very hot. I won't touch the wire gauze. This is a safety measure for you guys. Don't touch the wire gauze. Don't touch the beacon now. It is very hot. Okay, remember, water boils at 100 degrees at the coast of 98 yep, here in Joburg. So we're not going to touch that. What we're going to do, if my friend Mr. Cameraman, yay, comes over here, we're going to go to the board, okay, and we're going to start looking at physical change. Now, what I did with you guys is we looked at water going to gas. And the thing that I want you to notice, and you've seen these diagrams before, I know you have, you would have done them in grade 9, is this is water. Remember, water looks a little bit like Mickey Mouse ears. As a liquid in our, in our, in our beaker, it's, and it, as a solid, just be closer together. The particles are quite close. We give them enough energy. Now the particles start to move away from each other, okay? So all we're doing with the physical change is we're changing how close the particles are and how, how, how much they want to stick to each other, okay? So what does that mean? Let's look at the definition because you do need to know the difference. A, the definition of a physical change is that it's a change that can be seen or felt, okay, but doesn't involve the breakup of the particles in the reaction. And specifically, we're looking at the bond between the atoms, okay? Now, it's said particles are not atoms necessarily because sometimes when you have a complicated compound, say like sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, you can have a chemical reaction happening, and the hydrogen will get separated from the SO4, but the SO4 stays together. So we need to be careful there when we look at that definition. But the form, the phase of the matter changes, but not its identity. So when we boiled the water, when I went from ice to gas, okay, it's still water. There's nothing changing. It's still water but I've changed what it looks like. So form is just another way of us talking about phase. Solid, liquid, gas, okay, which you did a lot of in grade nine, okay? And one of the things we need to remember, number one, what we're changing is the particle arrangement. So we're going from the particles being really tightly packed in the solid form to being free to move wherever, wherever they like in the gas form, okay? There is a conservation of mass. Difficult to see with the experiment I did because I have an open system. The beaker's open, so it allows the gas to evaporate. Okay, but when I'm boiling it, I might change the phase of the water, but if I had a closed system and I then measured the mass of the water, the mass of the ice, and the mass of the gas, if I had any at the time, it would give me the same total every single time. Okay, because that's how much I put in. We don't see it so much here because it was an open system. There is an 
energy change. Now, this energy change you would have spent a lot of time on when you did the heating curve of water with your teachers, okay? Remember that in order for me to break those intermolecular bonds, I'm now taking energy in, okay, because it's got to take energy from somewhere, and that energy means that the bond between the particles can now be broken. And lastly, it's reversible. So I can take my water, okay, put it in the freezer, and I will change it back into ice. Same as, especially now that it's winter, okay, it's the worst thing in the mornings for me when you wake up in the morning and you've got that layer of ice on your car window. So annoying, okay. And that's because at night we have dew, okay, so we have get air, get, um, air vapor from water vapor. I'll speak English, <laughs> right, shall I? Okay, water vapor from the air, which then condenses into dew, which then forms a layer on your car, and then it gets really cold, and that becomes ice, okay, which then is annoying in the morning when you want to get it off your car, okay? But all we, so we're reversing it. So we can go from solid to liquid to gas, from gas to liquid to solid, but remember, there's some very special things that can actually skip phases. So things like dry ice, carbon dioxide, you know what they put in ice cream, the, those wonderful men who travel around on the bicycles with the ice cream, mm -hmm. they have dry ice inside their little, their little, I don't even know what to call them, their box things, okay? That dry ice, when you open it up, goes straight from solid to gas. And I'm hoping none of you have done this when you put it on oh. your tongue and it burns your I tongue. I had a friend that did that in primary school. Ooh. Her, Ow. And her tongue got stuck. It Ow. was horrendous. Yeah, no, that's and so fingers, fingers get stuck too. Uh, don't do it. <laughs> it's not pretty. It's, but that's also because it's going straight from solid to gas. So it's subliming. Another one which I can't do in the studio because it'll gas us all, is to take iodine, and iodine actually goes straight from solid to gas, makes this beautiful purple smoke, but we've got to do safety first, we've got to make sure we all, yes, you definitely. Know, and we know science teachers are all a little crazy because we smell too many chemicals, yeah. but anyway. <laughs> anyway, so that gets us to chemical change, so I'm going to need my friend, the Mr. Cameraman, again, okay, what we're going to do now is we're going back to my little table of goodies, and what we're going to do here is I'm going to take some magnesium ribbon, nice and simple. It's actually nice new magnesium ribbon, so it hasn't been oxidized. We're going to take, I'm hoping if you guys can see that, can we zoom in on the magnesium ribbon? So we can see that it's, it's tiny little silver pieces of magnesium ribbon. I'm not going to put all of it in because then that will just be not yeah, too much gas coming off. So we're going to put some magnesium ribbon into my beaker. Okay. And I've got very, very concentrated hydrochloric acid. This would be something that you, your teacher would do for you, okay? I would never recommend you to play with these. And I'm using the concentrated, um, I can show you actually the label. All right, I'm using the concentrated nitric acid simply because it goes a little bit faster, makes the reaction a little bit more dramatic. So are you guys all ready? Okay, if we can focus in on the, on our, should I take it off there? Yeah, no. Okay, let's do that. Let's not have any fluff in the way. Okay, so here we go. It's going to go quite quickly, but I've got another beaker, so I can do it again if we need to. And you can Ooh. see we get a nice gas coming off, and it's actually very, very hot. So we get this nice gas coming off, which if I was braver, we could light, and it would pop because it's actually hydrogen. And if you look very carefully, if we can focus in on the beaker at all, can we see the droplets on the sides? Okay, we have it, it's quite a, there's lots of moisture on the side. I'm not sure if you can, I think it's quite difficult because of the white. Okay, that moisture is because it got very, very, very hot. Okay, okay. So what we're going to do, because they went quite quickly, let's do it again. Okay, that one's quite warm. Should we be a little bit braver, Indy? Should we yes, have a little bit more magnesium? Yes, let's be brave. You know, like the kids say, Kay. use bigger pieces, like when you add the metals. Just Not like too brave, because don't forget, we're all in here. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's, hyd it's hydrogen gas. It's fine. It might make you cough a little bit, but it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to do any damage. So here we go. We're going to put some... There we go. In fact, that one was actually much nicer. You can see the fizz which is a clear reaction. Oh, it's bubbling very nicely. If you look at it, we get the nice smoke coming off. Hydrogen gas, not dangerous. Obviously, we don't want to breathe it in, but it's not going to kill any of us, which is always a good thing. Okay, and it gives us, and I'm, I 
I think they might, can we see a little bit easier? Is that easier for us? I'm not sure. Okay, it's actually quite warm. I don't want to burn myself. So that's always a bad thing. But there's a nice liquid coming off it. You can see, see the smoke. You're going to see it for a while because it's very, very hot. So it, so it gives off lots and lots of heat. Okay? Now, what I want you to see, though, is that it's a clear solution. Hydrochloric acid is also clear. The water was clear. So how do we know that something other than a phase change has happened? Because when I put the magnesium into my beaker, the magnesium has disappeared. Magnesium is a metal, and remember we did this last week, metals have very, very high melting points. So just because the magnesium has disappeared doesn't mean it's become a liquid. Okay, oops, let's not break anything, shall we? It hasn't become a liquid because then you would see the shiny metal. It's disappeared altogether, okay? And in fact, what we have in here is we now have a solution of magnesium chloride, and the gas that you saw coming off quite nicely, that smoke that you saw, was hydrogen gas, which, like I said, if I was braver, I'd actually light, but I'm too scared I'd blow something up, and that would be bad. Okay, so I'm hoping you all saw that. That was actually quite a fun one. We're going to go back to the board and we're going to look at what the definition of a chemical change is because that's really important for us because what we have here is the chemical change means we have the formation of a new substance. So in our experiment we started with magnesium, we started with hydrochloric acid and now we've ended up with magnesium chloride. Okay, it's a very specific type of of chemical reaction. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the different types of chemical reaction. In grade 10, you only look at two. And the first one is a decomposition reaction with hydrogen peroxide. I would have loved to have shown you this grade 10s, but unfortunately, because of the products, it's quite dangerous. So we want to not kill anyone, so we can't do it in the studio. But I really hope some of you have actually managed to see it inside the classroom. Okay, but what we've got, and I've put it into a molecule format for you is hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, which is what we have over here. Okay, so I have my hydrogen peroxide, and I've done this so that it's actually a balanced chemical equation. We're going to deal with chemical equations next week. Okay, and the hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide decomposes. It breaks up, and it breaks up into water and oxygen. Okay, and it's the oxygen gas coming off that, that makes this dangerous for us to do in the studio because you've got to heat it up and it becomes, you know, oxygen when it burns, not a good idea. Okay, but decomposition means that I'm taking, and I've got the chemical equation for us, I'm taking one substance and I'm breaking it up into two or more. Some things decompose into a lot more than just two two things, this decomposes just into two, but that's what decompose means. It means that we're breaking it down. Okay? The second type is synthesis. Now, this is a fun reaction. I particularly like to do this in my classroom, but once again, we can't do it in the studio because I'll probably break something. But what we like to do at school is we like to fill hydrogen balloons, and then you blow them up. And it's a nice big explosion, but the nice thing is there we get water, and here is our synthesis. So we start with hydrogen gas, and we have oxygen gas, and it gives us water. So synthesis is the opposite to decomposition, because synthesis means that I'm taking two things, two things, and I'm combining it to make one. So decomposition means that I'm breaking things up. I'm changing the chemical makeup. Synthesis means I'm still changing the chemical makeup, but I'm putting it together, okay, and synthesizing something new. Now, just like with the physical change, we have certain things we need to look at. Particle arrangement. We are changing the particle arrangement, okay, because we are changing the way the atoms are bonded to each other. With water, when it melted, it was still two hydrogens to one oxygen. Here, I'm changing it completely. With the magnesium and the hydrochloric acid, hydrogen was bonded to the chlorine. Now I'm bonding magnesium to the chlorine, so I'm changing the particle arrangement completely. There's still a conservation of mass. We're going to deal with this a little, again a little bit later on in the, in the show. This is so important, grade teens. You've learned along the way, hopefully in grade 8 and 9, that mass is always conserved and energy is always conserved. Still applies here, okay? And this conservation of mass is really important when it comes to balancing equations. Just because I've changed 
the way the atoms are bonded to each other doesn't mean I've changed their mass. They're still the same things, okay? There's an energy change. Now, the reaction I did with you showed you that very nicely because this was very exothermic, gave off lots of heat. Other ones that are very exothermic are things like burning magnesium ribbon in oxygen, gives off that beautiful bright white light. Endothermic reactions are very rare at school. Good example for you to remember as to how, what is an endothermic reaction is disposable ice packs. When you break those disposable ice packs before you use them, then they get cold. That's endothermic, takes in energy, and now the reversible part. Not all chemical reactions are naturally reversible. Okay, Phase change is reversible very, very easy. Not so with chemical change. Some things are very easy to reverse. Some things are not. So, for example, when I make water, okay, so I have hydrogen, oxygen, make water. It's quite an easy reaction. But to change that water back into hydrogen, oxygen is actually very, very difficult. And that is a problem for us. So it's not necessarily naturally reversible, okay? Yeah. And what we're going to do is lots of stuff you to think through is... Indy, we're going to take a small break, and then we'll take a couple of problems with what we've done so far. Okay, so let's do this, guys. Let's take a little small break. I know that you need a little break just to go and clear your mind to a bit of a woosa. I just want to say, um, Noxipedia, so glad you're joining in. She says, chemistry, I love it. <laughs> Balancing equations, wow. And also, I have to read this before we go to break. Um, it is from Precious, and Precious says, Hi, Indy and Tracy. You guys are doing a great job. I got 90% on physics because of you, so thank oh, you. Oh, wow, thank you. Yeah, that's so there you go, that's Trace. That's special. That yeah, makes that's very... Makes my heart... Don't cry. <laughs> oh, See, you make, you, you, you're bringing tears to Tracy's <laughs> eyes. Okay, guys, we're going to take a break. Please start getting those questions in. We will start answering them in the last 15 minutes of the show. Don't forget, we've got a Casio calculator to be giving away to you guys. Um, yeah, see you right now after the break. Hi guys and welcome back to Learn Extra Live. This is Physical Science Grade 10, just in case you're just tuning in now. I just want to do a big, big shout out to Liberty for making this all possible. You guys absolutely rock. Um, if you haven't been watching, we've just been doing awesome, awesome experiments. And I think, so I know, too, too <laughs> much fun, too much fun. And I think without taking away from Tracy's time, we're going to go straight back to her, get chatting on Get chatting to me on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Also chat to me on Twitter at learn extra. Without further ado, the lovely Tracy. Oh, thank you, Indy. Hey. Okay, as you can see, I've taken the lab coat off because, man, it's just hot. Yeah, you know, I think it's the guys <laughs> who will blame that. Anyway, so before the break, I said to you, we're going to come back and do a little bit of, we're going to do some problems just to refresh what we've just done. So now what they say here is for each of the following say, whether it's a chemical or physical change. Now remember, what we need to decide for if something's a physical or chemical change is whether we're changing the particle arrangement, are we creating a new substance, or whether we're just changing its phase. So if we look at the melting of candle wax, I'm not talking about the burning of the wick, so you're just melting the candle wax, all you're doing is melting it, so you're changing it from a solid to a liquid, which means this has to be a physical change, okay? So this would be a physical change. That one's quite nice. Then, the next one is mixing, and now we've got to read the question. It says to us that we're mixing sodium chloride with silver nitrate to form silver chloride. So we're taking two substances and we're creating a new substance, okay? This would, um, act this actually isn't decomposition or synthesis. This is a different type of reaction, which you don't need to need. It's actually a precipitation reaction. But because I've got two original substances and I'm creating a new one, it means that I have a chemical change. Okay? So we have a chemical change because of that. We look at our next one and we say, well, now we're mixing, mixing, which is exactly what I've done for you today, hydrochloric acid with magnesium to form magnesium chloride. And we go, oh, well, you should all be screaming at the TV now because we realize we've just done that. That is chemical change, okay? Now, what we need to remember, great teens, is that from here, we could actually be asking you later on, yeah, well, getting a little scared, to write chemical 
balance equations from these statements. So that's actually quite exciting is what makes chemistry so much fun for me. I'm terrified. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is in the next one, and this one becomes a little more hectic because now I'm saying that we're dissolving salt in water. Now, guys, I need you to realize dissolving is a physical process. Okay. And why do I know it's a physical process? Because I can revise burst this process through evaporation or filtration or something like that, okay? So this is a physical process. I know we now have two things involved. So we have the salt and we have the water, okay? But I'm not creating a new product. I might get a salt solution, but that's not a compound. That's a mixture, so be careful. And then the last one, He's actually just tearing a piece of magnesium ribbon. That would be the same as me tearing a piece of paper. Okay? I'm not changing anything. I'm not changing the chemical compound. I'm simply breaking some bonds and making them smaller. Okay? So that means we have a physical change. Okay? Starting to make a little bit more sense? All right. Let's go to another problem. Now here, I've said to you, Let's decide, state for each of the following whether we have a synthesis, where we're making a new compound, or a decomposition reaction. So, let's look at what we have, we, and this is the easiest way to decide. Here we start off with ammonium, which I'm not really sure why I wrote like that, because it should be a 2 over here. My goodness, ignore that 2. Okay, so we have ammonia and carbon trioxide, okay, and there's, so we have one, two, two reactants, okay, and on the other side, we end up with one, two, three reactants, okay, all right, so what we have here is we look at this, we go, mm, okay, starts with two, we ended with three, this is actually synthesis still though, because decomposition means that I am taking one substance and changing it completely. Here, I start with two, okay, and I'm, ch I'm adding the two together, and yes, I've got three as my product, but that's perfectly acceptable. I could have got four or five. It all depends on how it synthesizes, okay? Next one, this one's a very obvious one, and it's a very, 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 very important one, grade tens. It's actually a process known as the harbor process, you're going to be doing this till it comes out your ears, till grade 12. Unfortunately, it's just because it's a very important process for us. We start off with two things, which is our nitrogen and our hydrogen, and we end up with one, which is ammonia. So this is definitely synthesis. Okay, we're taking two things, making one. And then the last one is calcium carbonate, and this is also quite an important one. This is limestone. It's what we use in chalk and that sort of stuff. Okay, we start off with one thing, and we end up with calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. We end up with two. This is decomposition. So we've gone from one substance into two substances. Definitely decomposition. Okay, you still with me? All right, let's get on to the concept of conservation of mass, because this is where life gets a little tricky for us, okay? Now, the law of conservation of mass, this is something you need to learn, states that the total mass of substances taking part in a chemical reaction, excuse me, is conserved during the reaction. Total mass doesn't change. We can change the arrangement of the particles. We can change the arrangement of the atoms as much as we like. But what that means is the total mass before must be equal to the total mass after. So we look at, here I've got an example, and I'm using the Harvard process again, okay? Now, nicely I've put it into what we call dot molecules, because it's easier for us to look at, and we go, the white ones are hydrogen molecules, my blue ones are nitrogen, so what, we what the synthesis reaction gives me is ammonia. Now, we did a little while ago, you would have remembered we looked at formula mass and relative formula mass. So let's consider that. And let's look at the total mass before. Okay? So before, if we look at my little blocks, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six 
hydrogen molecules, okay? And we remember, because we did this, if we look at the relative formula mass for hydrogen, it's two times one, because on our periodic table we realize hydrogen's relative formula is one, mass is one, so we have two, okay? And for nitrogen, let's just quickly do nitrogens here. Nitrogen has a relative formula of 14, but there's two of them in each molecule, so it's 2 times 14, so it's 28. Now we get out our thinking caps and we go, okay, well, we just, I just said earlier we've got six hydrogens, so if we look at the total, okay, we've got to go six times the hydrogen mass plus two times the nitrogen's mass, okay? So it's going to be 6 times 2 plus 2 times 28, which means we have 12 plus 56, and 12 plus 56 gives me 68. Okay? That was impressive. That was in my head. Sure, we. I'm I impressed. I have my moment. I'm impressed. <laughs> okay, anyway, moving on. Not going to happen again. And I'm sure we're going to have a few questions about that. Oh, yes. No, we yeah. are, because we're not quite finished with it yet. Yes, I'm just yes. moving on. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, okay, with afterwards. Okay, so now we're looking at after. Let's do this in white so you can see the difference. Okay, and we go back and we say, well, we have ammonia, which is NH3. So first thing we need to do is calculate the relative mass, and we're looking at NH3, ammonia being 14, hydrogen being 1, so that's 17, but if we look at the diagram, we go, well, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So the total be afterwards is going to be 4 times that ammonia and 4 times 17. Oh, wait, look at that. It's 68. Okay, so before I had a total of 68. After I have a total of 68. That is really important. It means, and this is what you need to get, if I put in two little hydrogen atoms at the beginning, I must have two hydrogen atoms at the end. They can't go on holiday. They can't go for a rest. They can't change into something else. Okay? And that's actually the concept between bonding, is that they've got to still be there. They can't disappear along the way. Now, I'm hoping that some of you are looking at this and go, hang on, wait, Tracy. Wait, 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 wait. We weren't told that the mass is 1, but we were told that the mass was of oxygen is actually 1,01. You are absolutely correct. I'm still a little on the old periodic table, grade 10s. You've been given a new periodic table, and it's been decided by the department that you're going to be a little more accurate with your masses. Okay? So 11s and 12s, they would be using these values. It doesn't make a huge difference. We want to make sure you get the concepts. Okay, so... I think we're going to do one more just to make sure we've actually got this. Hydrogen peroxide, which then decomposes into hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, so the, the red molecules here, the red ones, that's oxygen, and the white is, oh, not oxygen, I'm lying to you. The white is um, hydrogen. Okay, so if we look at this, let's start with what happens before. Okay, I just need to make a little bit more space. Okay, so we have H2 and O2. Okay, we're going to use the 1 for the oxygen and, so for hydrogen and 2 for oxygen. So that's 32, gives me 34. And in the example I gave you, there's 4 H2. O2 molecules, so we're going to have to go 4 times 34, okay, and that gives me 136, okay. Now, if we do the same, okay, to this side, and we go, well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 hydrogens, so we're going to have to go 4 times the mass of hydrogen, plus 1, 2, 3, 4 times the mass of oxygen, so that means we're going to go 4 times 2, plus 4 times 32, okay, and what we realize is that 68, and guess what? Look at that, 136. Okay, so 
None of them can go on holiday, okay? Going to give you a little bit of time to digest that a bit, and we're going to take a break, I think, India. It's a good place to take a break. Yes, I think it's around. a very good place to take a break, because mm -hmm. what I am going to tell the mindsetters to do is, guys, we are moving into the last 15 minutes of the show. I know it's gone completely fast. Like, I can't believe where time goes. So now is the time to get your questions in. If there's anything that Tracy has been talking about that you're not understanding and you need us to answer in the next 15 minutes, now is the time or forever hold your peace. And without further ado, we're going to take a break. We'll see you right back here, right now. Hi guys and welcome back to Learn Extra Live. It's the last 15, 10 minutes of the show. I think we're going to go straight to Tracy and then straight after that we're answering questions, guys. So get those questions in. And before we go and we start, I want to give a big thanks to Liberty. You guys make this all possible. You guys rock and we love you lots and lots. But without further okay. ado, let's take it away, Tracy. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Well, guys, what I've done is the last couple of questions, and this is the last question I have for you guys, and then we're going to go straight to the Facebook questions, which I believe are coming them fast and furiously, is we need to look at how the questions are going to be asked in an exam type of situation, because those were just ways for us to show. So here it says, consider the following reaction, and we have carbon ca um, calcium carbonate going to carbon, um, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. It says, use diagrams and relevant calculations and show that the law of co conservation of mass applies. Now, we could ask all sorts of things through this question, just so you know, great tens. I could have asked you what type of bonding we have. I can ask you to name, to actually name all the products and reactants in it. So we're just taking one small part. Now, what they're wanting from you is when they talk about using rela rela relevant diagrams, it's like the diagrams we just drew. Okay, so what we have is we have calcium with carbon, with calcium carbonate. Um, so a relative, if we're going to draw what calcium carbonate is, now the nice thing is here I really am testing whether you understand that this is ionic. So what that means is we have the carbon, okay, and then we would have three little oxygens, and over here we have calcium. So that's the calcium. Okay, now let me actually do the calcium in yellow um, so that we, uh, there we go. So the calcium's yellow so we can see there. Okay, and I'm going to do the carbon in green. Okay, so that's my calcium carbonate, all right? Now, what it became calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So afterwards, we have calcium, uh, sorry, that's carbon, and we made carbon dioxide, and the oxygen is yeah, um, white, and there's my calcium, and it became... Calcium oxide. Okay, now, what we really see is whether you can draw molecules, whether you understand the shape, so carbon dioxide knowing that it's linear, but how do I now prove that the mass is conserved? So we go, well, let's look at what the mass is before. So the total mass before is going to be the mass of the calcium carbonate. Okay, so we take, let's find the mass of calcium carbonate. And I drew my line far too early. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it here because it's just is more correct. And calcium, I just want to check, has a mass of 40. Okay, I don't know that one off my, head, off my head, so it's important that we know that. Carbon is 12. Oxygen is 16, so I have 40 plus 12 plus 3 times 16, and it gives us a total of 100. Okay, now afterwards, we had the calcium oxide and we had the carbon dioxide, so if we look at afterwards, we go, well, we're going to have the mass, Ooh, and my pen has decided to go on holiday. Okay, there we go. We're going to have the mass of the calcium oxide plus the mass of the carbon dioxide. And we go, well, calcium oxide would be, the mass of the calcium oxide is going to be 40 plus 16. Okay, so another way of writing it. And for carbon dioxide, 12 plus 2 times 32. And this really does become a little exercise in arithmetic. Okay. So here we go. So we have 56 plus, and we're going to have 2 times 32 is 64 plus 12 is, no, I'm lying. That should be 16. I hope you're all screaming at the TV going, Tracy, you, you need to get your head read. 
because it's 2 times 16, which is 32. 32 plus 12 is 44. Oh, and look at that. It's 100. So they both have the same relative atomic mass before and after. There we Fantastic. go. Okay, Indy, what have we okay, got? Okay, let's, let's see what questions we've got here, guys. Okay. Okay, let's have a look. Um, okay, this one's from Malusi. Mm -hmm. What is the name of this compound? B okay. A. Okay, let's go here. B A. F two. Barium fluoride. <laughs> barium fluoride. Okay. There um, you go. Bari barium's unusual. Okay, but the barium you do need to know it. So B A is barium, and F is fluorine. So when we put them together, it becomes barium fluoride, and I think fluorine has a U in it. It does. Sorry, I teach science, not English, for a reason. Okay. Okay, so it's fluorine. Hey? It is fluorine. The element's called fluorine, but once it's bonded into a compound, it becomes fluoride. Uh. So the na so individually, it's barium and fluorine, but together, it becomes barium fluoride. I see, because Hope mm. Hope Boloy actually said barium fluoride. Did he? Yeah, so it's barium Brilliant. and fluorine yeah. makes barium. F okay, and barium I think I've fluoride. spelled fluorine wrong. I'm having one of my moments. No, no, I think I think that's good. Oh, it's one. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, anyway. let's see. Let's have a look here. Kay. Um. Sure. There's quite long ones. <laughs> I'm trying to, guys. They I'm will to be look quite long, unfortunately. I'm trying to wait for the look for the short. One. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mbusa said he's just yes. interested. He says, "I know that Tracy said we shouldn't worry about Harper, Harbor, Harbor process, Harbor process at this point." But now he's curious. So now he just wants to know a little bit okay. about. All it is. Um. It, what's his name? Um. This one's Mbusa. Mbusa. I apologize if I say that wrong. What it is is it's the name of the process when we make ammonia. And it's named after a German by the name of Harbour. Surprise that. And in fact, we're very lucky as a country in that we use a process known as the Harbour Bosch process, which is imported from Germany and was actually created around the World War II-ish. Okay, and we're one of the few countries in the world that actually have the license to do, to use the process because it's patented. And ammonia is a really, really important ingredient to fertilizers. Now, later on this year, you're going to do deal with eutrophication and that, oh, all sorts of things. It's going to come out your ears as well. And ammonia is a big part of that. So it's not just a cleaner; it's a, it's a fertilizer. So it's actually a very important process for us as a country. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. So that's a really good question, Boo. So, so guys, mm. if you do have any questions, don't forget, this is we, we've got literally like four minutes, and that's um, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra, or chat to me on Twitter, that's at learn extra, and let's get to the next yep. question, but you can still get those questions in. Um, this, is, this one's from Sontaga. Okay. Uh, Sontaga wants to know, what is the difference between molecules and compound? Okay. Molecules are covalently bonded substances. So, for example, um, water, when... Ooh, We'll just go back here. Yeah? Water is H2O. Water is covalently bonded. It forms a molecule. NaCl does not form a molecule because it's ionically bonded. So we don't call NaCl a molecule. We call it a compound. In fact, it's an ionic compound. Because if we had to draw it, we would draw it with little plus and minuses together like that. In fact, it, remember, it creates that nice crystal lattice, creates a nice hard structure, whereas with water, when we draw water, we actually draw the molecules overlapping. Okay, so a molecule is a covalently bonded substance, whereas, whereas a, comp and a molecule forms a compound, but a comp an ionic compound doesn't have a covalent bond. So all compounds, okay, let's put it this way, Molecules are compounds, but not all compounds are molecules because they can be ionically bonded, then it's not a molecule. Okay, yep. that makes total sense. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. Tracy, this one is from a mindset that visits us a lot, Coquetso. Oh, yes. I yeah, yeah Coquetso. Yes. You, know, you know the Coquetso and the Nele and the Kashifa and Wonderful. the Nisa, you know, they're always watching. Love yeah, it. And Buso favorites. Okay, so Koketsu wants to know, Tracy, is it a must to write the state of the element when writing the equation? And okay. Okay, I'll tell you the second part. Th that's now. a hard one to answer. To be on the safe side, write it in, okay, if you know it. When we were looking at the water one, because it was a physical change, yes, the state was, is, 
has to be there. So liquid to gas, very, very important. But when it comes to chemical reactions, it all depends on what you're trying to test. So I would say be on the safe side, write it in, because you will never be marked down for writing it in. But you can be marked down for not writing it in. It's mm. one of those hard ones where it all depends on what we're testing. Yeah, maybe yeah. sometimes it's easier to err on the side of just writing Absolutely. it in. Absolutely. I would err on the side of caution and do a little bit extra if you can, then not yeah. do it. And Absolutely. that's something good to know. Yeah. And I'm going to read this out because I know that a few mindsets is when Coquette asked this, everyone answered, which I think is fantastic. And Excellent. thank you, Hope Beloy. Mm -hmm. But she wants to know, what does AQ mean? Aqueous. Now, yes. that's a good one because you know what? I get this from grade 12 still. So yeah. please, guys, this is very important. When and water is the best example we have. Okay. So if I write water like this, it means water is in liquid form. That means it's a pure liquid with nothing in it. There's only a couple of things we ever write like that. Water is one of them. Um, boron. Uh, no. Oh, man. I'm going mad. I mean mercury. Boron, mercury, same thing. Anyway, mercury, we will write it as bromine. Okay? Bromine was what I was thinking of. We will write as pure liquids. They're not dissolved in anything. When I write NaCl and put a Q by it, it's not a solid anymore. It means that the salt has been dissolved in water. Now, it's a solution. Aqueous means water. That's what the word aqueous means. So here, it means that I've taken salt as a solid and I've dissolved it in water. So anything AQ is a solution. And 90% of the time, we're going to use solutions and not liquids. Pretty much the only ones you ever use a liquid. I've got up there for you, water, mercury, and bromine. The rest are all going to be in solution, dissolved in water. Okay. Good okay. Question. That was a very good question. I thought mm. so, because there's more, there was more than one person that was oh asking yeah. what AQ was. Very yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this one's from Sini Sipo, and he says, Why does the hydrogen peroxide atom separate whereby the two hydrogen atoms bond together and the two oxygens bond together? That's actually quite a nice question. It separates like that because remember, if we can have the decomposition, when it goes into the new state, okay, it wants to go to a state where it's got less energy because I talk about it with my kids all the time and I say to my learners that elements are much like teenagers, they're lazy, like to have as little <laughs> energy as possible, okay? So when, when we decompose it, we put energy into the system, okay, we heat it up, and the hydrogen and the oxygen separate. But now it's going, how do I get back to a place where I've got less energy? It does that by hydrogen bonding to hydrogen and oxygen bonding to oxygen. Because remember, hydrogen and oxygen are part of those seven elements that are always going to be diatomic, which is your hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, Fluorine, chlorine, iodine, and bromine. Okay, so those are your seven elements that are always diatomic, and that's, ma that's what makes them stable, ma makes them less energy, makes them very happy. Okay. Yeah. Now, this, this is something that I have to read quickly from mm. Kashifa. She's got quite a few, but I'm going to repost them for the mindsetters. So, Kashifa says, um, question, does anyone know any jokes about sodium? <laughs> and the answer is, nah. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that's hey? terrible. Oh, okay. But I, I like great. it. I, I, I think this is great. Okay. Yes. Um, let's see. Um, what did the scientist say when he found two isotopes of helium? He, he. <laughs> he, he. <laughs> H E H E. <laughs> oh, that's it's a good, it's a good joke for, for, for <laughs> Tracy. It's a good joke for Tracy. Because she sounds like she's on helium sometimes. Yes, yeah. no, we understand. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay. Excellent. Okay, this one's from C Sifi Lile. Mm -hmm. And Sifi Lile wants to know what type of bonding is the strongest? Hard question, I thought so. As it's, well. it's a nice question because it, it's all sort of relative, but covalently bonded molecules, um, your covalent bond tends to be the strongest because, and I'm, I think I explained this last week, is when, when they covalently bonded, your atoms and your nuclei get really close together, okay? So it's really difficult to break apart that atom. It's much easier when you look at sodium and chlorine. It's actually quite easy for me to break the sodium and chlorine away from each other. It's actually very easy because that's what I'm doing in salt, okay? So your covalent bond is your strongest and your Non-polar, your pure covalent bond is actually the strongest out of all of that. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
Let's cool. have a look here. Um, I, I, we've already got Grady Levins looking forward <laughs> to the next show. <laughs> Brilliant. Sounds it? like it's going to be an exciting show, actually, before. I think it's going to be awesome. So, guys, you better yeah. be tuning in. Um, okay, this one, let's see. I think one more question, and let's mm. try and not choose too much of a long one. Um, oh, okay. Kuno Helo. I hope I got your name right. Let's go for your question. I'm sorry for everyone that we didn't get to your questions. Mm -hmm. The difference between physical and chemical change. I thought I knew this, but I was kind of confused about the two. So we can do a quick one. Physical change is when we change phase, essentially. Okay, so I'm not changing substances. I go from solid water to gas, changing phase. Chemical change is when I'm making new substances. So I'm breaking existing chemical bonds and I'm making new ones. So I change from one chemical compound to another. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, so guys, I think that's the Grade 11 Learn Extra Live show done and dusted. Um, also, I just want to quickly let you know we do have the labeler, which is going to be, we're giving one away a day. So we're giving one away for Monday and one for Tuesday. Um, that's to the best um, comments or posts and the person that interacts the most and helps the most on the page. So Grade 10s, thank you so, so much for a fantastic show. Grade 11s, fill is up next with you guys. And Grade 10s, have a fantastic, fantastic fantastic day. See you same time, same place next week. Bye.